Hello everyone and welcome to another Arduino tutorial. Today I will teach you how to control a LED with a button. This is an easy project, so even if you're starting, you will have no problems. Here is what we are trying to achieve. You can see me controlling a LED with a button. The parts you will be needing today are an Arduino, a breadboard, a 4-pin pulse button, two resistors, for my values I chose a 330 ohm and a 1k ohm, and finally a LED. Let's start by connecting the power pins from the Arduino to the breadboard rails as usual. Next, place the button anywhere between the two sides of the breadboard. When you mount these 4-pin buttons on a breadboard, two things happen. First, they create a larger rail by connecting its two sides vertically, just like this. Second, if you click on the button, they establish a bridge between this side and the other, allowing any signal to follow through. Attention, this is a push button, which means they will only create a connection as long as you are pressing them. Now, connect one of the sides of the button to the 5V rail. What we are trying to achieve here is to make the Arduino receive a high signal when you press the button and a low when you don't. As we will use pin 3 to read the state of the button, place a wire between the pin of the Arduino and the board. Just like this. Now, when you press the button, electricity will flow from the Arduino, which will know is pressed. But the problem is that, when you release it, the connection leads to nowhere, making the Arduino read false and random values. In order for you to solve this, you need to implement a system called a pull-down resistor, which in this case, when you press the button, it sends a high signal, and when, you, and when you release it, it connects the pin tree to ground, making it read a low signal. Don't worry about this, I will explain it in a minute. For now, just follow through. Now, mount the LED just as we did on the first tutorial. Place a 300 ohm or similar resistor in the positive leg of the LED, and connect the shorter or ground leg to the ground of the breadboard. In order to gain control of the LED, place a wire between pin 2 and the other side of the resistor, as in the figure. Let me explain what is a pull-down resistor with a simple animation. You can see that when you press the button, electricity flows from the Arduino pin to the VCC, making it aware that the button is pressed. But, when you release it, the pin is on the air, which means the Arduino will read an inconsistent state, leading to wrong values. One way to solve this is to also connect pin 2 to ground. This way, when the button is not pressed, electricity will flow from the ground to the Arduino, which will be read as a low signal. But the problem now is that when you press it, you just short-circuited everything by connecting the ground directly to VCC, probably damaging your circuit. So, back to the drawing table. Place a resistor between the Arduino pin and ground. This way, when the button is pressed, electricity will flow from the Arduino into VCC as intended. And when you release it, it will flow from the Arduino to ground, also as intended. You are not causing a short circuit because there is a resistor or a load in the system. This is a very simple explanation. I will probably make a specific tutorial just for pull-up and pull-down resistors, explaining the electronics and math behind it. Now, let me mount my circuit. All we have to do now is to program the Arduino. Today I will introduce some new features, such as conditions and how to read the signal. Before starting, let's establish the role of the pins. The pin 3 will function as an input. Here we'll read the button state. The pin 2, as in the first tutorial, will be an output for controlling the LED. In order to store the value of the button, you need to create a variable. Let's call it button value. Button value is an int or an integer which will store the state of the button. When it's not pressed, it will have the value 0, and when you press the button, it will read anything other than 0. 
Since we will use the pin number multiple times, let's store their values in two variables. Now, we can refer to the pins by an alias or a name. The button variable will hold the value 3, and the LED variable the value 2. Now, when declaring the pin modes, instead of writing their numbers, you can just call the desired variable like this. Instead of pin 3, use button and set it to an input in order to be able to read the state of the button. Do the same for the LED pin, also using the variable LED. Instead of an input, this has to be an output. In the loop function, the first thing we should do is to read the button state and store it in the variable so that we can use it later. Button value equals to digital read parentheses as this is a function and in the parameter the pin from which to read. Every time the program loops through here it will update the variable with the state of the button. So the program must obey the following condition. If the button value is not zero, meaning button pressed, the LED will turn on. Else, the LED will either turn off or not turn on, meaning if anything else than zero is read into the button value, the LED will turn off. All you have to do is to translate that sentence into code. It's very intuitive. Start by writing the two main statements, if and else. When the statement in the if parameter is true, it will only run the code between the curly brackets of the if function and ignore the code in the else function. When that same statement turns out false, it will run the code in the else function, ignoring the code inside the if. The statement is, if button value not equals to zero, then turn it on. You can turn it on by using the digital write function. Don't forget to write in the parameters which pin and state you wish to change. If anything else happens, or by other words, the button value is zero, the LED will turn off. Make use of the digital write function to turn it off. Again, don't forget the pin and the state you wish to change. Let's assume the LED is already off and you turn it off again. Don't worry, that's no problem as nothing will happen. The code is done. The only thing left to do is to actually send it to the Arduino. Here's my circuit. You can see here the pull-down resistor. Let's send the code and see what happens. Yay, it's blinking! You can see that the LED is blinking flawlessly due to the pull-down resistor. I challenge you to mount the circuit but without it to see what happens. In the next tutorial, I will teach you how to send a message from the Arduino to your computer using the serial protocol. Thank you for watching.